اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین سیدنا محمد وعلى اہل بیته الطیبین الطاہرین اللہم صلی على محمد و آل محمد كما صليت على ابراہیم و آل ابراہیم و بارک على محمد و آل محمد كما بارکت على ابراہیم وآل ابراہیم انکا حمید مجید Respected dear brothers and sisters السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ My dear respected viewers brothers and sisters السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ Welcome to our new episode where we are going to discuss about very important subject of those things which will make our fast void. If you remember, last episode we were talking about eating and drinking. And we did touch in the last episode about things if we eat and how and drinking also will cause problem to our fasting. Now today, this is part two of eating and drinking. So we are going to talk about eating and drinking and how if we eat and drink in the month of Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan and the fasting which we have, it will be void. So it is a very important subject which we need to be together in order for us to get a benefit, insha'Allah ta'ala. Now, not only we are going to talk about eating and drinking that will cause problem to our fasting, but we will mention the related issues which we need to know, which are known as part of eating and drinking in the month of Ramadan. Now, as we know, when we talk about eating, is to take something, put it into your mouth, chew it, or swallow it, it goes to your stomach, that is eating. Drinking is putting a liquid in your mouth and swallow it. So that is drinking. When we talk about these two things, if we are fasting in the month of Ramadan, it is haram during the days of the holy month of Ramadan. From the time of Fajr until the time of Maghrib, we are not supposed to eat or drink during this period. So if we eat and drink, then our fasting will be void. However, we mentioned in our last period that there are some cases where one can be seen as if he or she is eating while he is not eating. Like, for example, tasting food. If a lady, for example, is cooking or a chef is cooking and we say, if he or she wants to test whether the salt or sugar is okay, he or she is allowed to test the food, but just put it on the, the tongue, but don't swallow. If you put the food on your tongue, then you can know whether the salt or sugar level is okay. And then you have to spit it out. Everything which you have put it in your mouth, on your tongue, you have to take it out and don't swallow it. So that is allowed. Also, we mentioned that a lady who feeds a baby and the baby who has started eating the food and if it requires, for example, it's not easy, let's say, for the mother to crush the food by using the hand or using, for example, spoon and fork and knife. If a lady needs to chew the food in order for her to feed the baby, that is allowed so long as the mother doesn't swallow the food. So chewing the food, giving it to the baby, in order for the baby to eat the right food after it has been chewed, that's fine, so long as the lady or whoever is doing that doesn't swallow the food. So this we mentioned in our last program. Now, there is an issue which is to do with eating and drinking. And this is a medical side which today our scholars have been discussing this particular issue. For example, if someone suffers from a disease which is known as asthma, 
and he or she needs to use inhaler in order for him or her to be in a good condition. So suppose someone has been attacked by asthma. When asthmatic attacks come, can I use inhaler during the days of the month of Ramadan or not? If I am fasting, I started my fasting well. Then the attack came to me. Can I take inhaler during the days of the month of Ramadan and use it? Or the pumps, the way they call them? The answer is yes. You can use that pump which you use it to relieve yourself from the attacks of asthma and you continue with your fasting, your fasting will not be void, your fasting will not be battle, your fasting will be okay. Why? Because using inhaler is not eating and it's not drinking. According to many doctors, they say when you use inhaler, it goes to the lungs. It doesn't go to the stomach. So when we talk about eating and drinking, eating and drinking is to put something in your mouth and will go directly to your stomach. But when we use inhalers, it doesn't go to the stomach. And that's why it is allowed when people are fasting during the days of the month of Ramadan. And if they are attacked by asthma, they can use the pump and they can continue with their fasting without any problem. So this is one issue which is related to eating and drinking. There's another issue. What about smoking? If someone decides, let me take cigarette, cigar, whatever they call it, or for example, hookah, they try to use that and they say, well, we don't swallow any smoke. Will that be counted as eating and drinking? Of course, the answer is yes. Smoking cigarette, smoking any kind of cigarette, smoking pipe during the month, during the days of the month of Ramadan will make our fast to be void. So we need to be aware of that. If you remember, we, we have mentioned one thing, and that is one of the things which breaks our fast is... Uh, Swallowing dust, which we are going to, to mention that. So smoking is almost to do with that. When you smoke and you, you swallow, if we can use the, the word swallowing, you, you put your, your, the smoke inside your, your, your mouth and then you do smoking in and out, the, the smoke will break your fast. And for this reason, we need to be aware that smoking, uh, any, any kind of smoking, will cause trouble to our fasting. So this is counted as part of the issues which are known as eating and drinking. Someone may say, well, if I take, for example, a pipe and I smoke, I don't, I don't put the smoke inside, I just take it outside, will that be counted as if someone has eaten something or not? The issue here is about the akhlaq of the month of Ramadan. If people see me playing with smoke, even if I don't swallow it, then it, it will be seen as if I don't give the hurma, the sanctity, the honor of the holy month of Ramadan. So sometimes, so of course it can be makruh if, 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 for example, I don't swallow the smoke, but in order for me to be in the list of those people who are counted as they are fasting, I shouldn't even play with the smoke. So smoking will cause trouble to my fasting. There is another issue which is to do with injections. So if, for example, I'm not feeling well, or I want to travel, and uh, the doctor said you need to come for vaccination. So we give you that and you travel. Can the vaccination which we use, if the doctors, for example, use the normal injection to inject in my body, vaccination or normal injection, will that make my fast to be void? The answer is no. That one will not cause any trouble. 
It is only what you call drip. For example, you go to the hospital and the doctor says, well, you need to be given drip. As drip as we know, it's on the basis of water and the pipe will be inserted in our bodies. That one, because it is on the basis of water, the water will be put into my body, then that one will make my fast to be void. So drip will cause trouble to my fasting. But injection, normal one, will not, because it's not be taken as eating and drinking. Now, one thing we need to mention, all these injections and so on and so forth, if someone is not well, his condition is not good. He needs to eat and drink during the days of the month of Ramadan. Then, of course, he is not well. He can eat and drink and then pay that day after the month of Ramadan. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says clearly, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Anyone among you who is not well or who will be on a journey, then he, he, he needs to eat and drink during the days of the month of Ramadan and then he has to pay those days which he has eaten and dr drinking in the month of Ramadan. So this masala or these issues are to do with eating and drinking. Last thing which we need to discuss here is the issue of those people especially young ones, all those, their condition is not good. What if I start fasting and then, especially for the people of Europe and America during the summertime, fasting is very long, more than 18 hours. Some young people and those, their condition is not good, they cannot tolerate hunger. They cannot tolerate, for example, thirst. Are they allowed to drink and eat something if their condition is not good during the days of the month of Ramadan? The answer is yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given permission to those people who are in difficult condition. Thirst is too much for them. They cannot tolerate. They cannot bear that. Then what they are supposed to do is they can drink to the level of quenching the thirst, or they can eat amount of food which will make them continue to live. And they are not supposed to eat and drink again. And they are not supposed to show people that they have taken something uh, during the days of the month of Ramadan. This is the akhlaq of focusing and thinking about others. However, if they drink and eat because they need to save themselves, they are supposed to pay that particular day after the month of Ramadan. So when we talk about fasting, we are not talking about hours. We are talking about the period which is between Fajr and Maghrib. In between here, we need to avoid eating and drinking. And finally, last point is about Al-Imsaq. What is known as Al-Imsaq, this is the period just before Salatul Fajr. Before Salatul Fajr, let's say Salatul Fajr is at 3 o'clock a.m. in the morning. For me to be on the safe side, what they call it, ihtiyat, to be on the safe side, I need to stop eating, not exactly at 3. I need to give it some time let's say 15 minutes, 20 minutes for me to stop eating and drinking, and then I can get ready to prepare for Salatul Fajr. If it happens I have eaten something just before 3 a.m., just before Adhan of Salatul Fajr, then that is fine. However, to be on the safe side, we need to stop eating and drinking just a few, few minutes before Salatul Fajr. I hope, inshallah, these masail will help all of us. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all, brothers and sisters, and to accept your psalm, your fasting, to accept your du'as. And please remember all of us and the team which is working on these programs. 
Remember them in your du'as. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our a'mal. Wa akhiru da'wana. An alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.